Welcome to another video of the SimWorks Studios T37B Tweet for Prepared Version 4. In this tutorial video, we'll demonstrate how to start up the aircraft from a cold and dark state. We're currently sitting in the cockpit with our canopy closed, so let's get the aircraft started up. First of all, let's move the pilot's kneeboard out of the way so that it doesn't bother us by obstructing the switches during the startup procedure. The kneeboard can be dragged by the frame using the left mouse button and moving it fore or aft. It can also be hidden and unhidden by clicking the frame with the middle mouse button. First, we need to make sure that the throttles are in the cutoff position. Look at the instructors set and ensure it is set correctly. It is important to note that in the tweet only the instructor throttles have cut off. We can now turn our battery on by left clicking on the battery switch located in the forward panel just left of the instructor's throttle pedestal. This battery will supply DC power which is needed by the lighting system, fuel pumps and engine starters. Where we are currently, as you can see it is still dark, so now is the time to set your interior lighting to the appropriate level, using the knobs located on the instructor's pedestal. Next step is to turn on the pitot heat and set it to the on position. This is if the weather requires it, if the weather does not require it you can leave it in the off position. As you can see the weather at the moment it's not required. Next we want to set our inverter to spare and then main. This is done by right clicking the inverter switch setting it to spare and then left clicking twice to move it to main. Now we can set our position lights to position light only or pos LT only and make sure our beacons are off. Check that the landing gear handle is down and perform a test of the gear warning lights and horn. This is done by pressing the warning light test switch which should make both landing gear levers illuminate in red. Our landing gear position indicator lights should also be on as well as the fuel boost pump warning light located over the primary flight instruments. The elevator trim light should be illuminated green, meaning that our trim is neutral. Next, do a visual check of the ailerons and ensure that the trim is neutral. Now, to start the engines. First things first, turn the fuel boost pump to on and wait for the warning light to extinguish. Left click the starter switch on the left engine to set it to the ground position. When the engine crosses 5% RPM, left click on the ignition switch. At 8% RPM, move the left throttle on the instructor's side to idle by right clicking the lever. As the EGT or exhaust gas temperature rises rapidly, we can now turn off the ignition switch. The starter switch can be turned off when the engine is past 25%. Hydraulic pressure should now be between 1250 and 1350 psi. We will now advance throttles up to approximately 60% and observe the load meter which should move to the right. Move the left throttle back to idle and the engine should stabilize at approximately 40% RPM. We will now repeat the procedure for the right engine. Okay, with both our engines now started and stabilised, let's prepare the aircraft for taxiing. First, you need to set your comm radio to on and either select a channel from the presets or set it to manual to select a station. While we won't be using air traffic control in this video, we've set it to manual. Set the DME switch to standby 
by right clicking once on the switch. Next, we will cycle the speed brake and flaps and confirm proper operation. With them confirmed operating correctly, we will now turn on the taxi light by right clicking the switch on the left side of the instrument panel. We will now release the brakes and turn on nose wheel steering so we can taxi to the runway. Nose wheel steering on the tweet is toggled using the cabin no smoking alert assignment in your simulator. And the T37's nose wheel steering system is turned on manually and works up to 65 knots where it is automatically disengaged. As we taxi to the runway, we'll be checking our flight instruments ensuring that the heading and turn indicators work correctly during our turns on the taxiway. Once you are lined up with the runway, set your external lights to strobe and position. Uh, this is done by left clicking the nav light switch twice. Also turn on your anti-collision and landing lights. Trim the aircraft up until the trim light extinguishes. Set your flaps to half and perform a final flight control check. With all that confirmed, we are ready. Hold the brakes pressed and move your throttle to military power. With the engine RPM now built up, we'll release the brakes and begin our takeoff roll. During the takeoff roll, maintain directional control using the nose wheel steering. We will turn it off at approximately 65 knots, which is our nose wheel lift off speed. As we are approaching 65 knots, pull back on the stick. Nose wheel should lift up, turn off nose wheel steering and allow the aircraft to climb. As we cross 100 knots, we will raise the landing gear using the G key and turn off the landing light. At 110 knots, we'll now raise our flaps. That's all there is to it, and congratulations, you have just performed your first takeoff in the T37B Tweet from SimWorks Studios.